Hi, my name is Shauna lampy Laguerre, and I am in the backyard of my friend Janice's with her beautiful dahlias. We have had an amazing summer in Yellowknife. Ten years ago when I started to paint, I learned a very basic color palette of warm and cool of each of the colors, just but simple. And I spent the last 10 years learning chroma and, and value and design and composition and learning how to be a, a fairly competent, I think now, uh, realist painter of birds, mostly birds and flowers in watercolor. But now it's time to play. So I've begun a playlist called Playing With Colour and I have a whole winter of videos planned that that's all I'm going to do, play with colour. And I hope that you will be able to join me. The, this video is creating a yellow, red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, which James Gurney calls Yermby. And it uses six, six different primary colors. For more explanation about this and to get the pattern for making your own color wheel, I have the link below for my blog. So grab your paint tools and let's get going. Here are the tools that we're going to need when we're producing our color wheel. They're just a protractor and a compass. And the measurements will be on my blog, and you can see them here. The link is below for my blog. We're going to begin with setting out four different colors, cadmium yellow, light, cadmium orange, cadmium red, medium. And you'll see that I changed my mind, and I actually go to cad red medium. I was kind of flirting between cad red and light and cad red medium. I decided with cad red medium. The very first thing I'm going to do is bring a lizard crimson permanent up to the value 4 where it's at its most chromatic. I'm putting out the different values I'm going to need to change the chroma and this is the neutral gray. There's a link below that will take you to the video where I will show you how to make a neutralized gray. So I'm going to start with value 9, but quickly I'm going down to value 8 because I want to also not only bring down the chroma, but I'm bringing down the value of the yellow as we go along. Because in the center of the color wheel, there is a 3 centimeter circle of value 5 neutral gray. There are 9 steps in each section of our color wheel. So we have to have 9 little puddles of paint. move them up so I have more space. Back to value 6 and the next one we're going to do is value 5 and bring that down. Only for the light ones are we going to have to sort of do this staged moving down from the value that it's at to the value 5. And as I go back up I'm working on just bringing the chroma down a little bit more on this very chromatic yellow. So here we go to paint it on. We're stepping down with chroma and value in this cadmium yellow light part of the color wheel. I have started a new playlist that's called Playing with Color and I have a whole plan of different things I'm going to do this winter in exploring color. I'm going to create all kinds of different color value charts and complementary charts and all with a goal to understanding how different sets of colors work together. Now we're on to the cadmium orange. It's value 7 so we're just going to start at the value 7 and we'll do a couple value 7s and then we'll go down to value 6 and then we'll go down to value 5 as we move down the chroma scale. The other thing I'm going to play with is color studies where I don't have to produce a great big painting. Using a color study I can then really dig deep into what the snow looks like when the sun is low on the horizon on December 21st on the shortest day of the year. That is a plan and there's lots to do. So now we're going to add the cadmium orange onto the chart one step at a time. 
For the past 10 years, when I first started painting, I learned a very limited palette of cool, warm of each of the three primaries, red, yellow, blue, and allowed me to get really comfortable with the range of colors that I could mix out of that limited palette. But then I could focus in on skill development for other parts of the paintings that I needed, like value work and chroma work, and focusing in on design, composition, what feathers look like, and making sure I can be accurate, improving my drawing and my painting skills. Now we're just going to be putting on the color that I mixed up. And we're just going to move this along quickly here. So this is Cad Red Medium. It's very chromatic, a very strong pigment because it's straight out of the tube and it's the most chromatic at value 4. I have used value 5 all the way along to lower the chroma. So it's lightened it a tiny bit. In fact, I had a hard time getting it gray enough because it was so red and so chromatic. And that plays into the next one, which ends up having more problems with having too much gray in. But we'll talk about that in a second. So our cadmium red medium, number eight, and then number nine. So alizarin crimson comes out of the tube at a value two, but its most chromatic is value four. So I lightened it up with white, and in that I forgot that if you add white in, you're, you're not having as an intense pigment as you have when it's straight out of the tube. And you'll see very quickly that it goes very gray very quickly. I figured out that if you're adding white to lighten it to bring paint to its highest chroma, then you have to be more careful with how much gray you put in. It's not the same as doing the cad red medium. I left it just as gray as it was, and I'm not going to worry about that. And I made the changes I needed to when we came to the next set of colors. If you have any ideas or suggestions for what I can play with in colors, leave a comment below. So now we are doing the next four set of colors, quinacridone magenta, dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue, and a combination of ultramarine blue and cobalt teal. Value 5 is what I need because for at least three of them, I'm going to bring the chroma up to a value 4. Now this mixture also makes it to a value 4. I'll add the white to the quinacridone magenta to get it up to the value 4. And I'm testing it, you don't see that. Now here I am, and I've remembered because I added way too much gray in the last round. And I left it there so that you could see that. And I was more careful this time around with that. This color wheel is from the James Gurney Color and Light book that I have had for quite a while and I would recommend for anyone who's a painter to get. It's a fabulous book. It's not a how-to book, but it's filled with gems of ideas and that's just a great tool for artists to use and think about while they're working. I've wanted to do this for a long time, so I'm glad that I'm making time to do some playing this winter. And it is getting to be fall-like here in Yellowknife. We've had rain and 14 degrees Celsius. Fall has arrived. <laughs> so here we are. We're lowering the chroma as we do, step by step, using just the value 5 because we brought the dioxins in purple up to value 4 so that it's at its most chromatic point. This color wheel is a CMY, which is cyan, magenta, and yellow, and an RBG, which is red, blue, green. So we have six different primaries in this color wheel. It's a very different way of thinking about a color wheel. CMY is used by printing and photographers. And the RBG is used by in lights and in computers and in the TV screen. 
So we're kind of taking both those things and bringing this together in this color wheel, which is quite fascinating. I have plans for this color wheel that won't probably happen until later this winter, simply because of all the other things I have organized to do. Again, you can see that the gray is a little bit too strong in this one, and we're quickly losing the blue, which is fine. It reminds me that cobalt blue is a low tinting color and doesn't take much to overwhelm it. It's not as intense as a phthalo blue would have been to work with. The last round of four colors is cobalt teal, cobalt teal with permanent green light, permanent green light, and permanent green light with cadmium yellow light. The reason I chose cobalt teal over phthalo turquoise, which is a lovely color and would be perfect for this, is that it took less work. I didn't have to bring it up to a value four, and it's a little less intense. The permanent green light is the same thing. I don't have to do anything more. It's the most fully chromatic right out of the tube, and I don't have to do any other work. So sometimes keeping it simple makes your life easier. I have value six, and I work my way down. The cobalt teal is a value six. So then I worked with value six and then into the value five as it went further down. Now I paid more attention and you can see that it's not going quite as gray as quickly. I was more careful with this round. But again, I didn't change this. I'm leaving it the way it is and I'll work with it how it is. It's part of the process, not being too much of a perfectionist. I have enough of that tendency. I don't need to make it worse. We're getting close to the end. We only have three more to do and our color wheel will be accomplished. I'm actually really excited about playing with all these different color ideas that I've sort of had in the back of my head for a long time and being able to take the time to explore them and share them with you. I'm really excited about that. This is the mixture of cobalt teal and permanent green light. And that starts off at a value five because both of them are value five. So they just go right to the value five. So I'm only using the value five neutral gray to change the chroma as we move down. So if you open up your computer and you say you want more colors, if you're looking at like Photoshop or I use Affinity Photo. This is kind of the wheel you're going to see, just not in paint and more smooth. <laughs> the second last one, the permanent green light. You could use a phthalo green blue shade for this and just bring it up to a value four and do the same lowering the chroma. There are options, so you don't have to use exactly the same colors I have. You don't have to buy any more colors than you have if you already have the phthalo green blue shade. If you're thinking about doing a phthalo turquoise instead of the cobalt teal, then you can get that from Windsor and Newton. And the last one, here we go. We are almost done. Isn't that just a pretty color? Number seven, number eight, and number nine. And here we are with a finished color wheel. And you can see the yellow, magenta, cyan are in equal distance, and the red, blue, green is an equal distance from each other. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you in the next art video.